let's take a look at the wave model. And we're going to begin by considering what is a wave. Well, fundamentally, a wave is a pattern. It's a pattern which transfers energy, usually by moving through a medium. A medium, in this context, is just what the wave is traveling through. Now, this is a little bit awkward, but that's often true with fundamental ideas. So, with a wave, there is some kind of disturbance as a source, and there is a pattern which moves away from the disturbance, and that pattern carries energy with it. So, for example, with water waves, imagine you have a smooth surface of the water, you take your finger, and you poke the surface of the water right here. Well, if you poke it, you'll see a disturbance, a wave moving through the water away from the initial disturbance and away from the source, i.e. you poking the water. And those water waves that are moving away from the source are going to carry energy with them. Now, you can also think about, uh, say, a singer. Now, uh, if a singer is right here, the singer is the disturbance, the sound waves are traveling away from the singer, carrying energy with them through the medium, through the air. Uh, we can also think about the sun giving off light. Well, light is electromagnetic waves. So the sun here is like a disturbance, a source, and the light waves are carrying energy through space. So if you're standing in the sunlight, uh, when those waves impact you, they carry energy to you. They transfer energy from the sun to you. And that's why you feel warm when you're in the sun. So when we talk about waves, we're going to talk about different types of waves. And the first two categories we're going to split it into are mechanical waves and electromagnetic waves. Mechanical waves are waves which require a medium. And that's most of the waves that we're going to encounter. Electromagnetic waves are a special type of wave which do not require any medium. They can travel through vacuum. Mechanical waves over here, we're going to further split into two categories, standing waves and traveling waves. Standing waves, we're going to focus on a little bit later. They're interesting. Uh, they have a lot to do with music, electron orbits, quantum mechanics, weather, all kinds of crazy stuff. We're going to focus now more on traveling waves. These are waves which move through a medium. Traveling waves, we can further split into two categories, transverse traveling waves and longitudinal traveling waves. Transverse waves are waves where the medium itself oscillates perpendicular to the direction of energy transfer or direction of propagation. Longitudinal waves are waves where the medium oscillates parallel to the direction of energy transfer or the direction of propagation. And we can see these two waves if we think about a slinky. So I'm going to draw a slinky with no wave, kind of in its equilibrium state, if we just leave it alone. And now I'm going to imagine that on the left side of the slinky, I'm going to take my hand, and while it's attached to the slinky, I'm going to move my hand up and down. So I'm the source. And if I do that, the wave that travels through the slinky would look like this. Parts of the wave would be up, parts of the waves would be down, there would be peaks or crests and troughs, and the wave would move to the right, away from the disturbance. So this looks like a classic wave, right? Kind of what you expect. However, if I move the end from left to right, then I'll get a wave traveling through the slinky, but it looks a little different. I'll get areas of compression and decompression, except I won't call them decompression, I'll call them rarefaction. And the wave will travel to the right, but it looks a little different. That doesn't look like our classic view of a wave. This view above, where I move my hand up and down, that's a transverse wave. This one below, where I move my hand to the left and right, that is a longitudinal wave. The longitudinal wave, turns out, one type of that is sound waves, which we'll look at a little bit later. We need to think about the anatomy of a wave, the ways that we describe waves. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the wavelength. The wavelength is defined as the shortest distance between points in the wave which are in phase. Another way you can think about it is it's the distance between adjacent peaks and troughs. It's a little more natural. Uh, the unit of wavelength is the meter, and the symbol is the Greek letter lambda, which looks like this. Now we'll also talk about frequency and period and amplitude, and they're pretty similar to when we talked about them with oscillations. Frequency is the number of oscillations per second at the source. 
and it can also be defined as the number of wavelengths that pass a point each second. All right. The period is the time it takes for the source to complete one oscillation, but it's also the time it takes for one wavelength to pass by a fixed point. And we use the same symbol and unit for both frequency and period. Amplitude is the maximum displacement of the medium from equilibrium. Okay, just like it was with oscillations. Same symbol, same unit. And then we're also going to talk about this thing called wave speed. Wave speed is the speed of the wave pattern through the medium along the direction of propagation. And the symbol that we use for wave speed is either C or V. Can't make up our mind. I wish they would. And the unit is meters per second. Now, there are two common ways to graph waves. First is going to be displacement versus position, sometimes called displacement versus distance. And then the other one is displacement versus time. Now, they look pretty similar when you see them. But they're showing two different things. The displacement versus position graph, or displacement versus distance graph, is showing the displacement of the medium from equilibrium versus the position in the medium. And it's showing that at one fixed time, at one instant. It's like a snapshot of the wave. Okay. A displacement versus time graph is different. A displacement versus time graph shows the displacement of the medium from equilibrium versus the time at one fixed location in the medium. So we got to kind of figure out the difference between them, and we're going to look at each one independently. So first we'll look at the displacement versus distance graph. This shows the displacement of the medium from equilibrium versus the position along the wave at one moment in time. So it might look like this, okay? Displacement, position, here's our wave. And in this graph, if we look at the distance between adjacent peaks and troughs, that's a wavelength, right? Because our horizontal axis is measured in meters. It's a position. This is a wavelength. All right, and here's an amplitude, okay? Now, if we have a displacement versus time graph, this is showing the displacement versus time at one fixed location. So this is showing how one point in the medium oscillates in time. So distance between the adjacent peaks and troughs in this graph give us a period. All right. Now, wave speed. Let's think a little bit more about that. The wave speed is the distance that the wave travels divided by the time that it takes. So if we imagine this wave traveling through, say, water or space or whatever it's traveling through, the distance that it travels divided by the time that it takes to travel that distance, that's the wave speed. Well, let's say it travels a wavelength. The time that it takes to travel a wavelength is one period. So the wave speed is equal to the wavelength divided by the period. And I can rearrange that a little bit, and we can see that the wave speed is also equal to the wavelength times the frequency. And that equation right there, V equals the frequency times the wavelength, which is equal to the wavelength divided by the period, that equation is in your data booklet, and we'll get a lot of mileage out of it. And to end with, we're going to think about sound waves and electromagnetic waves. So sound waves are longitudinal, and the medium is air, at least usually. Sound waves can travel through water and solids. But usually we think about sound waves traveling through air. Uh, they're longitudinal, so the wave motion is parallel to the oscillation of the air molecules. And it's made up of regions of compression and rarefaction. Now I'm going to draw a diagram here. It's going to be displacement versus distance. And it's going to look, look a little odd. Because remember, this is a longitudinal wave. But I'm going to draw this graph. Looks a little like a transverse wave. But... Here I'm defining the displacement of the medium as being to the right and the left. So at this point right here in the graph, that's showing that at that point, the medium is displaced a little bit to the right. And then right here, the medium is at equilibrium. And then down here, the medium is being displaced to the left. Here it's at equilibrium, and here again it's displaced to the right. So it's a little odd. And if you're in my class, we'll decipher this uh, during class time. But just keep in mind, this is a way of showing the displacement of the medium in a longitudinal wave. It looks like a transverse wave, but it's not. <laughs> okay. Um, now, pitch. When we think about pitch with sound waves, the pitch is related to the frequency of the sound wave. Uh, if we talk about high pitches, 
that's high frequencies, low pitches are low frequencies. And when we talk about loudness or volume in a sound wave, that's related to the amplitude of the sound wave. Um, all right. Now, electromagnetic waves. Electromagnetic waves are transverse traveling waves that don't require a medium. They can move through vacuum. Um, and they consist of oscillating and perpendicular electric and magnetic fields. Okay, so how does that work? How can we get <laughs> oscillating perpendicular electric and magnetic fields? That sounds very strange. Well, that's a long story. I'm going to draw a diagram of it, and we're not going to discuss the full physics of what's happening here. But you have oscillating magnetic and electric fields. So here I'm going to draw a magnetic field there, the electric field like that. They're perpendicular to each other, and they're traveling along this axis. They're created by oscillating charges. So if you have an oscillating charge, you can create, or you will create, an electromagnetic wave. When they move through vacuum, they travel at a speed of 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And that is called the speed of light, which is designated with a C. In matter, they will slow down. So when electromagnetic waves travel through matter, they slow down. And how much is determined by some things that we'll talk about later. Uh, now, if you look at that, I, I said that in vacuum, they travel at the speed of light, C. Why? Well, because light is an electromagnetic wave. And electromagnetic waves are categorized by their wavelength. And there's a diagram of this in your data booklet. I'm not going to completely uh, reproduce that right here. But just keep in mind, electromagnetic waves are categorized by their wavelength. 